Pink Dragons were created by Jean Maguire for Dragon Magazine issue number 156, published in April 1990. The contents of this issue were April Fool's themed, with lots of nonsensical and hilarious articles and such weird monsters as the Plink Mammoth. Let me know in the comments section below if you want me to make an ecology and lore video about them. Pink dragons, according to this article, can be found almost anywhere, most frequently in some form of underground lair. Many hapless adventurers have been fatally fooled by the dragon's dopey appearance and delicate pink coloration. This isn't often depicted well, but the ends of the wings and often some flared fins around the head and neck can appear sort of dainty and floppy, like a butterfly wing or something. The pink dragons tend not to have a lot of extra spines and horns. They have sleek limbs and their scales are smooth, like a glossy tile in delicate pink with reflective glossy white highlights. They look like they're slick, and they usually are, thanks to their unique bubble breath weapon. When they have the opportunity, pink dragons are quite talkative. They tend to be just as haughty and arrogant as any other dragon. Even the most benevolent of them consider it quite an honor that they're not instantly killing everyone and taking whatever they want. Pink dragons are on the chromatic side of the family, so their jokes take on a deadly twist. Pink dragons who start to get more and more sarcastic with their jokes, who get more and more belittling and objectifying of creatures smaller than themselves, yeah, time to back off, or better yet, leave the area entirely. Pink dragons are known to tee over the arms and legs of underlings who don't find its jokes amusing enough. While most pairings of chromatic dragons result in a chaotic blend of features, the pink dragons display the wicked ambush tactics of the white dragon with the bullying need to dominate and physically harm others of the red dragon. So they set you up to be the object of a very mean joke, something very insulting, and if you take the bait, you fight to the death. You never stood a chance, you fool. You should have groveled before them when you had the chance. If you don't, well then, you fight to the death, you sniveling coward. When a mighty dragon challenges you, the res well, refusing the challenge is a mortal insult, so you're doomed either way. Either get out of there or fight until the dragon has bested you, by killing or more than likely capturing the player characters as pets and playthings. And I've been captured by a few dragons, it's never fun, but you can live to tell the tale. Pink dragons tend to be chaotic neutral, they're not intentionally evil, they just don't kill out of a sadistic enjoyment for the most part. Their neutrality extends to their treatment of other creatures. Once they have a species figured out, they tend to just be very selfish and self-centered. They're not empathic towards the needs of other creatures. They expect everything to be about them. Their wants and needs should be the main topic of conversation. Changing the topic away from the dragon's wants and needs will not be tolerated for very long. The breath weapon of the pink dragon is highly unusual. A special stomach serves to mix fatty secretions with a fluid closely resembling lye. Elemental air is this dragon's planet affinity, so the resulting goop combines with a huge volume of air and produces a breath weapon, a massive, obscuring, slimy bubble cloud, similar to that produced by a horn of bubbles. This cloud is 60 feet long, 50 feet wide, and 20 feet high, and it lasts for 2d6 rounds. Anyone trapped in this cloud is potentially painfully blinded unless they make a saving throw or have on good eye protection due to all of the soap in their eyes. All attack rolls, spell casting, concentration and skill attempts are made at disadvantage unless they are not impeded by the soap and slime at all. Avoiding all that is as simple as making a DC 10 dexterity check right when entering the foam or having on good eye protection and this will avoid getting totally blinded by it. Uh, needing constitution saving throws and probably having the eyes bathed in fresh water. But even wearing goggles is not going to improve the heavily obscured area, so all attacks are still made at disadvantage. When the bubble cloud is in place, the dragon merely closes its protective eyelids and navigates with ease using sonar-like clicks and very sensitive hearing. The dragon prefers to have the advantage when attacking and can take an opponent apart with the precision claws and bites each round while staying protected from counterattack by the slick bubble mass all around it. This hunting technique is actually highly effective, and adventurers should be very wary of it. It's funny, right up until you're just another red smear among all those pretty rainbow-hued bubbles. I've seen one of these dragons simply shove its smooth-scaled snout into an open window on the side of a building and whoosh, the whole place is filled up with that deadly foam in a split second blowing out the rest of the windows and doors, tossing all of the furniture and people from their beds. You couldn't tell where the exit was, couldn't breathe, and all of them died slowly and the dragon just moved from one building to the next, making that deep bubbling and burping sound and then 
another family dies. The pink dragon unfortunately takes after its white parent in that it prefers to hunt without making a sound undiscovered. You can tell when you confront one and it gives you that annoyed hiss like a grumpy boa constrictor, suddenly huffing up its size, arching that long spine and turning the flats of its tail and wings to intimidate. But that's the best it can do. Pink dragons notably do not possess supernatural dragon fear. They are low magic in general, this subspecies. I'm not sure if it's a result of the crossbreeding or they are strangely uniform really considering the chaotic chromatics would normally either not be able to conceive or the result is always a random unpredictable monster. Sometimes a dragon but often what is best described as a spawn of Tiamat. Pink dragons have no greater resistance to magic than any comparable size of dragon but also only about 20% of all pink dragons learn how to unlock their innate magical ability at all. And only those that do have that innate power will take the time to collect and study magic further. If a pink dragon is making a boast about how powerful its magic is, and you don't see a single spell book tossed into that great treasure hoard, then that dragon may very well be lying. Just watch yourself though, as pink dragons do love deception. Pink dragons tend to favour the illusionist style of magic. They do a lot of sneaking around and prefer to attack from ambush or attack a very confused foe. Better to win the fight before it even begins, and only a fool would fight fair against such a resourceful and intelligent opponent who just happens to also want to eat you. Let's not forget that dragons eat people. Pink dragons are slim and dexterous predators. They move like weasels, not brutes, and they can still cut a man down to ribbons the moment they have full advantage. In the case of the pink dragon, they do show a lot of restraint, but falling into a deadly bubble mass with that dragon in there, let's just say it's not going to bother telling friend from foe unless you are a very good friend of that dragon, because they do enjoy killing people. It's what their body is made to do. They're not very well designed when it comes to defending themselves against other dragons though. They tend to gravitate towards creatures of low intelligence that they can convince to fight their foes for them. Pink dragons favour giant kin, so Verbeeg, Feral Furbolg from the frozen north, not the tree-hugging southern hippies, ogres, trolls, various troll kin. If near swamps, they attract Grung or Bullywug, not both. Otherwise, there's always lizard folk. And in the Underdark, the troglodytes, the grimlocks, the quaggoth, also combining the great webs of Etacaps, Chitane, Arania, and other sorts of clever arachnids with the giant bubble slime pit death pits that they create. It's a nasty trick, particularly if you throw in wrestling with slimy, highly irritated and irrational carrion crawlers in the pits, or perhaps even a chul or two if you want to really murder someone. Pink dragons don't grow particularly fast once they get to adult size, not compared to other dragons. They spend a lot of their life at huge size and only rarely get to gargantuan or beyond. A typical adult pink dragon reaches about 36 feet long. Here's a basic stat block for an adult using 5th edition. Note that the author of this stat block included the theme of the pink dragon being obsessed with telling jokes to the extreme, which I fully approve of and just goes to show how you can include that pretty easily. The bubble breath being treated more like a slime pit environment hazard is also good, though I would include the effects of having vision impaired by it. I'd drop the legendary actions aside from the tail attack. Something like sweeping the tail or wings to slam a whole area with already exhaled foam, knocking opponents prone and mining them in the goop, uh, obscuring vision and creating a whole new area of difficult terrain. Uh, it has no disadvantages and I'd also give the dragon the ability to cast some illusions, basic illusions, just uncomplicated sounds or images. Mirror image is always a good choice for egotistical dragons because of course you want to see duplicates of your own gorgeous draconic form. Actually, I'm just going to totally redesign this stat block. It's based on a comparable adult white dragon uh, and just changed some other things around that don't really change the challenge rating. So here you go, there's the pink dragon for you use it to your heart's content. Oh yes, organic things exposed to the bubble slime for a long time will break down in it eventually, taking one point of damage per minute until they dissolve. To add a nice horror element to your pink dragon, first give it a gross mutation when put a bit on the outside that should normally remain on the inside and have it digest its food externally like that, eventually slurping back up all that revolting slime full of slurry. 
Special shout out to two longtime channel supporters, Derek and Jessica Dell. Happy birthday, Jessica. This one is for you. As for the rest of you, don't forget that I'm able to take requests for monster video and location topics, but my list is very long at this point. I will get to those topics eventually. In the meantime, thanks for listening. And as always, I'll be back with more for you very soon. Thank you.